We're joined by Eddie Horn. Ha- Eddie Horn. <laughs> Eddie Horn. Uh, you look like a bit of a dodgy anchor man tonight, Ed. Do but, uh, feel good after this night's oh, been I a bit don't know what this is. Uh, What's this yeah, with new stuff? Do you know what? Let's start this whole thing again. No, we'll keep going. All right, we'll keep going. Don't blame it on sunshine. <laughs> Don't blame it on the moonlight. Sorry. Do you know what? I feel like at the end of the night, that's when you, you let loose a little bit. Yeah. Oh, we can relax now. It's job yeah. done. It's job done. It's on to Cleveland. He's satisfied with the job and, and, yeah, and fantastic. satisfied with the first shot. I mean, you know, there, there was a lot of fights on there. There were a lot of tougher than anticipated. I mean, Cal Yafai, obviously. Galau Yafai also. Um, one of the local Emirati fighters lost in, in an unexpected defeat. Um, Shakram... Uh, sorry, Shav, Shav, I haven't even had a beer yet. Shav Ra- uh, Rakimov. Shav Kat Rakimov. Yeah, him as well. Against uh, Zelfa Barra, unbelievable fight. I mean, I've never been so emotionally pumped for a fight during the fight for a long time. And it was, I, I loved it. And I really felt like Zelfa was going to do it. And, you know, picked up, I think, an injury uh, on his leg. And it, they just, they won't work. And um, they betrayed him, didn't they? They did. And Rakimov, you know, just it, the, the pressure was relentless. Um, Chantel Cameron boxed really well against a really tough, bruising, um, just unpredictable at times, Jessica McCaskill. I mean, she, you know, and, and uh, Chantel had a massive victory to become undisputed. And I have to say that I think Dimitri Bivol may be pound for pound number one. I mean, this guy is so good for Amazing so much. many times. For so long, people have been telling me this guy is, is the real deal. And he's just been looking for the opportunities. Obviously, the victory against Canelo Alvarez, incredible, pound for pound, number one. But that victory tonight, you know, I hardly had him losing a round, in all honesty. I mean, I think sometimes these, these judges kind of give a few consolation rounds as the fight goes on and it's so one-sided. But, you know, maybe lost one round. But I think this guy's sensational. I really do. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced he's the best 175-pounder in the world. Obviously, the Canelo Alvarez rematch is there. Um... The better be a fight is one that he really wants for undisputed as well, and and I, I, I'm not sure who's going to beat him. In all honesty, Anthony Joshua uh, was ringside tonight. I just well, it was a bit heavy for him, but <laughs> but I just wondered what conversations you'd have had with AJ and for his AJ. Reason. AJ was sitting next to me, next to Joshua Boatsy, and and they were talking about the fight, the whole fight. They were talking about Dimitri Bivol, what he does so well, what Ramirez needs to do, and. It was just so difficult, and as good as Ramirez is, he's 44, I know he's a former super middleweight world champion. Just so difficult for him to find a way in the fight. And he didn't stop trying, and by the way, he soaked up a lot of punishment in the later rounds. Um, because I felt he was hurt early in the fight, actually. And uh, it's just Dimitri's feet are so good. You know, every time Ramirez would look to attack, he'd be out of range. And, and also, Bivol looked like he was hardly breathing at the end, in all honesty. I mean, he's super fit. He never marks up. His feet are unbelievable. His, his shot selects everything. He's, he's an outstanding fighter. It must be demoralising fighting him. And I think Zerdo, albeit 44 and 0, perhaps noticed the difference in levels tonight. Would you yeah, agree? because I think you're talking about pound for pound great in Dimitri Bivol. And, and, you know, Zerdo's an elite level fighter. We know that. He's a former world champion. But it's just there is another level to world level. And that's the, the elite level people talk about. And that is Dimitri Bivol all over. Like you said, he wants to be undisputed. You believe he will be undisputed at 175. We don't know what's going to happen with the Baturbiev Yard fight and how long that might drag on for. If the fight with Canelo does present itself at 168 and you're his advisor, you're advising him, you're promoting both fighters, arguably, would you t- tell Dimitri to take that yeah, fight? Yeah, I mean, you've got two things. I think you've got Canelo Alvarez that wants to rematch him really probably under the terms that he lost to uh you know can sal's the kind of guy that he doesn't want people to think that he's trying to almost change the terms of the fight to benefit him you know the reason that that canelo alvarez accepted the challenge against dimitri bivo is because he was a 175 pounder and it was a big challenge but we all know how good dimitri is now but then can dimitri make 168 he's always said he could but he hasn't done it for a long long time um, so we need to speak to both guys. I mean, you know, Dimitri Bivol is about legacy. You know, he wants the belts. He wants the undisputed championship. And if Better Bivol's going to fight Yard in February or whatever it is, and then you have Ramadan shortly after, and he's not available till the, the second half of the year, Bivol's going to fight. And if that's against Canelo Alvarez, then why not a 168? Because that would give Bivol an opportunity to become undisputed at 168. And then if he was successful to move up and fight better, be able to become a two-time undisputed champion within two fights. So that would be quite sensational. Um, and we'll have to speak to both teams, both camps, and see what's next. Where does Joshua Boatsy fit into this frame at 175? Well, again, I think uh, depending on if the Canelo Alvarez fight gets made, Dimitri Bivol is going to need to fight. 
So if, if there's no Bivo against Canelo and Better BF's fighting Yard and then has Ramadan shortly after, I think Joshua Boatsy's right in the mix for that. You know, you've got Callum Smith as well. I still, you know, I would like to see that fight between them two. I can't lie. You know, I know they're both looking for, for shots at the world title, but at the end of the day, that's a fantastic domestic fight. So we'll have to see. But, you know, Dimitri Bivo is, is, is the king right now of the division in my eyes. JB really feels like he needs that big statement fight now, doesn't he? He does. And, you know, he's very close to getting it here tonight. In fact, it was quite soul-destroying for him just watching in the ring. And, you know, but also, look, everything happens for a reason. Joshua Boatz, he's still learning. He's still improving under, under Virgil Hunter. And when you look at Dimitri Bivol, you know, you'd say he was a favourite over Joshua Bratz. He's a favourite over everybody right now. So, you know, I don't think that the time learning and improving with Virgil or maybe another fight will do Joshua any harm and he'll be back in the ring early next year. I had Rakimov here. I had Joe Caldina here. Yeah. Joe looked at the belt and he said, that's my belt. Mm. In terms of that fight getting made and happening, you said that they, both fighters before the fight tonight had agreed to fight Joe Caldina next. That's signed, yeah. When's that happening? Yeah, then? that's going to be uh, probably the spring. Of, of 2023. Joe Caldina obviously had his operation. He's back in the gym. He's not punching with his right hand yet, but it won't be too long. That is a tremendous fight. I mean, you know, we would have seen a great fight here tonight between Caldina and Rakimov, but you're going to see a great fight back in, in Wales uh, in, in spring 2023, early summer. That's a tremendous fight for the division. A very tough fight for Joe Caldina. You know, coming back from the injury, Rakimov is all action, relentless pressure. And shout out to Zelfa Barrett, you know, maybe even a move up to 135. I think he has a big future. He showed tonight he's a world-class fighter. He hurt Rakimov repeatedly in there tonight. And I thought he gave a great effort. Just watching from afar, heard a little rumour backstage. Did you have a little run-in with Freddie Roach in the ring? Yeah. <laughs> he came up to me after the fight. I must have said something to him at the weigh-in. Like, I said, I think Zelfa's going to beat your guy or whatever in... I think maybe I said that we'd have a little bet on it or something like that. And he just came up to me and went, where were you with the bet or something like that? No, because the first thing I did was I said to Joe, Joe, and I pointed to Joe and to Rakimov. I said, he, you know, he's next. And Freddie came over. He said, where was the bet? And I was like, whoa, whoa. Because he was, I think he was ready to swing for me, to be fair. <laughs> and I was, I was actually shitting my pants. My favour, Freddie. Yeah, so would I. A million percent. He's a former fighter. And um, anyway, so I was like, I said, look, that's over. We didn't bet on that. I said, but I'll bet on this one. And he was like, he was still piping up. So in the end, I gave him a cuddle. I said, I'm sorry, because I didn't want him to chin me. Love always wins. Yeah. Uh, just a quick one on Abu Dhabi. Been an exciting week for mm. all the team, exciting week for you, exciting week for all the fighters, and uh, the first of many in the Champion Series. Yeah, it's just been an incredible experience, you know, working with the DCT, just bringing boxing to new, new regions and, and starting new journeys here. Like I said, from this is going to inspire younger generations. This is going to increase grassroots participation. And this is going to open the door for us to establish Abu Dhabi as a major destination for boxing. And you know, that was a great night tonight. There's so much more to come. We'll be back here in the spring as well with some big fights. And now the journey starts here. You know, we want to make sure that we're in existing markets where boxing is thriving. And we want to be in markets where boxing is just beginning. And tonight was the beginning of boxing in Abu Dhabi, and it has a huge future. Great stuff, Ed. And now we're off to Cleveland. Off the, I'll actually, just talk quickly through yeah. the, the rest of the year. So, Cleveland, then yeah, Dillian White, then the Trilogy, then Dillian then White, then Estrada Chocolatito, then Josh Warrington. So, plenty of air miles still to rack up. Cleveland next week's a great fight. You know, Montana Love headlining. Uh, Stevie Spark from Australia is a great fighter. He, he's a big puncher, and he's all over this fight. It's going to be a war in Cleveland next week. Um, so, we look forward to another big show in America before back. For a huge show at Wembley, Dillian White against Jermaine Franklin. It's a massive fight for the division. Um, Fabio Wardley against Nathan Gorman. Great fight for the British heavyweight title. Craig Richards against Bolotniks. Sandy Ryan. Pat McCormack. Mark Dickens and many, many more. Big Th card. This is the final question. Any right. developments on Katie Taylor? No. I mean, look, Chantelle Cameron's victory tonight is puts her in a position where she becomes a, an option for Katie Taylor as well. If not in that first fight, definitely in 2023. Um... We're talking to Amanda Serrano. Obviously, the Erica Cruz fight's been ordered as well for the Undisputed. We represent Erica Cruz, so maybe there's a two-fight deal to do in the early part, of Jan maybe January, February, and then April, May at Croke Park. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, but um, the, the strategy and the plan remains the same for Katie. Ireland, next. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Ed. Cheers.